Major funding for college wrestling was provided by Friends of Iowa Public Television. brings you the big intrastate showdown between the Iowa State Cyclones and the Iowa Hawkeyes, the two premier wrestling teams in the sport today, who in the past 13 seasons have captured every NCAA team title. Last season, the Cyclones snapped the Hawks' nine-year reign as national champions. Today, they hope to break the Iowa 43-meet winning streak at Carver-Hawkeye Arena, where the Hawkeyes have never lost a home duel. Good evening, everybody. I'm Doug Brown, and welcome to our second college wrestling meet of the season. Next Tuesday at 9.30, we'll have same-night coverage of Iowa State and UNI from Cedar Falls, and we'll have more weekend specials for you later on, too. Also, we have our second run of, of the uh, seven basic skills of wrestling with Chuck Patton, and tonight you'll learn another fundamental that will help you understand the sport just a little bit better. It's Iowa and Iowa State, and here's Tim Johnson with me, former coach, administrator, and director of the 1984 Olympic wrestling program. TJ, since we were here last, the shoes are on the other feet. You bet. It's been a long time since Iowa State was the defending national title, and that's what it is tonight. Yes, the Hawkeyes are not the national champions now, but the people around here really believe they're going to win today. You see these little buttons that people are wearing that say, take it back from state. Well, they really want it back, and there's a prevailing opinion that Iowa can do it, even though they're ranked lower than Iowa State right now. Now, the Cyclones got back on number one by a big week of wrestling last week. At the Virginia Duels, Iowa State upset previously number one ranked Arizona State, and now they're number one again. So why does Dan Gable feel so optimistic about this, this meet, about winning it? It's the new era, and he thinks his wrestlers are right where they want to be right now. He's hoping that they can go over to the top with this meet. It's good young wrestlers. And also, they are at home. And home has been a real advantage to the top four teams in the nation over the past few years. We talk about youth. We mean real youth because there is a man on each side tonight who was in high school last year. That doesn't often happen at this level. Well, Bart Shelsvig, he was redshirted or supposedly going to redshirt this year, mm -hmm. and he was too tough to keep out of the lineup. Dan Gable said to himself, hey, our lineup's better with him in. He's tough. Let's get him in there, and he's in there tonight. And Dan Knight, another top recruit, was in the lineup from the start. Well, nobody was surprised when the four-time state champion Dan Knight broke into the lineup early. He came in, but he's had a few lumps lately, and it's kind of like, welcome to the big time, but we'll see that young man progress. Now, every match, you know how Iowa and Iowa State are. They're all tough, 10 matches. But let's talk about a couple that maybe just have a little edge of glamour, you know? 126 pounds. Well, Steve Knight, he loves to wrestle, but he couldn't find his niche at Iowa City, and he had to transfer up to Iowa State. And the reason he had to transfer is a young man named Brad Penrith. Bad Brad Penrith, a former NCAA champion, he's had his personal problems lately, but Gable says they're licked, and he's better than ever. And at 177, two more Iowa high school products. Well, Mike Van Arsdale and Royce Alger's rivalry goes back to high school. They both like to talk, but this they have not met since entering college. Van Arsdale, a former All-American, redshirted last year, and he's looking to win the Nationals this year. But he's got Royce Alger in front of him, and Royce Alger has moved up from 167 again to make the team better, and he has no intentions of giving up his title. Well, now, sometimes this meet is decided by somebody you didn't expect. What do you think? Well, if you're asking me where do I 
think that the difference could be? 158. 158. 158 huh? could go a long way in deciding this meet tonight. Either way. Either way. What happens if it comes down to heavyweight the way it does so many times? Well, Doug, if it comes down to heavyweight, we know what happened last year. Sinlinger won. But Eddie Banning, assistant coach at Iowa State, says he likes the way his heavyweights react in this year, and he would, wouldn't mind if, Andy, if it came down to Andy Cope. Well, we're going to find out in one minute. Iowa State against Iowa from Carver Hawkeye Arena on Iowa Public Television. We're back at the Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City for the big showdown between the Iowa State Cyclones and the Iowa Hawkeyes. And there is the record that is on the line tonight. 43 in a row. The Hawks have never lost in Dan Gable's era and at Carver Hawkeye Arena since this building has gone up. It's kind of interesting, Doug, that the last dual meet that they lost at home was the last one in the old field house against Oklahoma State. And here we go at 118 pounds. You see the Knight brothers for Iowa State in the first two weights against Martin and Penrith. At 134, Gibbons and Happel, two Iowa high school products. At 142, Gezi against Pearson. Iowa State on the left, national champion Krieger against Carpenter for Iowa. In the upper weight, it's Bill Tate against John Heffernan in what Tim says is a critical match. At 167, it will probably be Jeff Kelly, although it could be Tom Frederick against Bart Chelsvig, a freshman. A big match at 77, Van Arsdale and Alger. Volker defending national champion against Simpson at 190, and then the same heavyweight match as last year, Cope against Sindlinger. Sindlinger has wrestled Cope twice, and he's beaten him twice, so the Hawks should be, uh, should be favored probably if it gets down to that last match. There's Dan Gable. Well, that's all you have to say. That's Dan Gable. Well, I'm not going to say anymore. And he is uh, feeling a, better, a lot better about his team. He has an idea now how, he says, I know how good they can be. I just have to convince them now. Right. He uh, said that the team last week came around. There's and Jim he, Gibbons, too, he, by the way. Uh, Tim, before we go on, he has been just remarkably successful since taking over the reins of the Cyclone program from Harold Nichols. There are the captains out in the middle. You see Krieger on the left from Iowa State, Volker. On the other side there is Mark Sindlinger with uh, the man they call the fall guy, Royce Alger. And here we go. Iowa is favored probably in these first two matches. But Iowa State wants to keep it close and maybe get an upset here. 118, Steve Martin, a fine sophomore from a great wrestling tradition. The Martin family of Virginia Beach, Virginia. He's now ranked 11th in the country. His opponent is Dan Knight, one of the two, I would say, most highly recruited wrestlers in Iowa, certainly, if not in the entire United States last year. And they're both out here tonight. You'll see Mark Chelsvig wrestle for Iowa at 167. Knight has had what lots of freshmen have when they come out of high school, a rough introduction to big time wrestling. He's now 10 and 10 and he is in a little bit of a losing streak. So Martin's going to try to take it to him here. Iowa in the black, of course, the dark, and Iowa State in the red. Martin wants to get in and tie up. He gets the collar block, goes to the leg, then comes back up again. Nothing so far. Three minute first period, you know. Two minute second period, two minute third period, unless somebody gets pinned. The referee is Phil Henning of Marshalltown, Iowa. He's wrestled lots of these big matches, and he is, he's refereed these big matches, and he is wearing a microphone so we can hear him talk. <laughs> Both of these wrestlers, Doug, like to control the head. They get, have to get their own offense going because their weakness is when they stand around and get defensive. So they both coaches feel they have great offenses, Let's but go they need the to middle, get guys. going. Knight has been blocking off pretty well, but I don't think he's made any offensive moves yet. And Martin has started a couple and then decided not to. There's a two-on-one tie-up by Knight. You see on Martin's right arm. The setups are oh so important, especially when one of the people who haven't wrestled before. 
They're both showing similar styles. They're both showing that they want to do the same thing. Now, there is what they said. Now, right here is where he has to follow through. He's been struggling on his finishes. He needs to be able to finish fast with this. This is Knight. He doesn't have control yet. He's trying to uh, turn that into a takedown. Now goes to the double leg and gets it. Well, that's a surprising move there. He made a nice shot, attacked the leg, and followed through and finished. Dan Knight takes a two nothing lead. Dan Knight's a very strong young man. In fact, he's a good size for a 118 pounder. And he does like to ride, too, I think. He, right here, he drives across. You notice he didn't try to lift. He drove the man across his, his body. That was a very good move by on. Dan Knight. 2 nothing. We have a minute 20 left to go. You've got nine period. seconds riding time. Slower right. 2 to nothing. Knight will stay down and ride. But Martin comes to his feet well. Well, of course, Martin's known for his Granby. He didn't have to use it. No. He's out at 2 nothing. Well, Dan Knight has done something very important here. He's established a leg attack, which you just didn't know whether Dan Knight was going to be able to show. Now Martin's in, but oh, a powerful wizard by Knight. There was his strength again, wizarding out. Strong overhook, and he, he stopped Martin's move. Two to one in favor of the man in red, Dan Knight, a freshman. Oh, he got off his face, and there's the beautiful snap down by Martin. Right. Dan Knight reached out there. Martin took advantage of the bad position, snapped him down, and spun around. So now Martin rides. Dan Knight trying to control the hands and come up. Martin would like to tilt it here. Right. He, he does tip him over. He's going to try to get that shoulders turned toward the mat. He's not really a pinner, Steve, not, uh, Steve Martin isn't. But he can score points from the top. He leads here three to two. And Knight goes back to the bottom. Now freshmen often have trouble on the bottom, but uh, top man, you're we're on. told that that uh, Knight is pretty good about getting out. There's the roll, but Martin's controlling very well. See that high half? Half Nelson there. He'd like to tip Knight with that. Well, he's keeping Knight in bad position. He's keeping us. Hips down, working on him hard. Just Period. looking for something here or there. Period's almost over. Control well. Choice, top bottom feeder to first. Knight Iowa deferred, down. and Iowa chooses down. <clears throat> so Martin figures he can come out, and he'll be ahead four to two if he does. Okay, bottom man is set, top man, you're on. The freshman, Knight, Dan Knight, whose brother Steve will be wrestling Pat Brad Penrith next. Can't keep Martin from standing. Return him. You hear the referee, Bill, he Bill Henning, saying, you, ha you have to return him. And so he let him go. It's 4-2. Center. There's some of the crowd. Here's Gentlemen, both of you. Steve Stop Martin. Stop when the whistle blows. Stop when the Sophomore, engine Sophomore, Virginia Beach. Phil Henning wants to get control of the match. Right away. You see Knight with a two-on-one. That's uh, it's hard to make any shots when your arm is Right, but he'd like way. to get right there. He'd like to be able to control with the front headlock and do the same thing that was done to him. Snap down, spin around. Martin went to the other side with a try for a heel pick and then gave it up. Middle, They're both taking turns controlling the head, and there's and another again, shot. And again, the same move, a single. Nothing, 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 nothing. There's nothing. There's got to be a nothing, lot of presence about Dan nothing. Knight right here. He's got to know where he's at. Nothing. Nothing. See what happens. Nothing. Listen to Phil Henning. He'll tell you what's going on. He's yeah. going to call a stalemate. Two, three. Two, there it three. is. Boy, that was close. Well, I don't know why Steve uh, Martin ended up giving it up. But he's out now. A takedown by... By Knight, an escape by Martin makes it 5-2-4 in favor of the Hawkeyes. Good scramble situation by both wrestlers right there. Well, I'll tell you, I think this has been a tougher match than uh, people expected here at 118. And you know what's done it? Dan Knight's leg attack.
Yeah, he's been able to get two takedowns. He's been able to lower that level and get in on the leg attack, which is kind of surprising. Five to four, Martin Lee. Probably not to Coach Gibbons and the coaching staff. They've, they've done a real good job of coaching here. They well, told him that, hey, you're not going to be the wrestler you want to be until you can vary your attack. See, there is, a, again, Knight has the two-on-one right. tie-up. Center. And he's up. been able to drop off of that into the single leg. That's exactly right. But he wouldn't mind if he would be able to snap down. So he's in the position he wants to be when he's on the two-on-one. Steve Martin cannot let that happen. Oh, almost got Keep in there wrestling. again. Keep wrestling. And when Martin reaches with that right side, then... Uh, Night Wizards. Right, and, he's, and he's, his strength gets him out of that Center. situation. So it's a good match here between Steve Martin, fine young sophomore from the Hawkeyes, and Dan Knight, a freshman for Iowa. And it's 5-4 uh, in favor of Martin, last period. And let's see. There, he's Martin, gonna, he decided to take up. That's I'm, right. I'm very surprised by that well, because he'd like a point for escape, maybe. But uh, on the other hand, he didn't want to get ridden out the entire okay, period, right. too. The, uh, Steve Martin showed some real good riding there for a while and didn't want to get caught underneath, and he felt he feels good on his feet. He's taken him down twice. He was ready to choose down. Coaches uh, told him, well, we like you on your feet. So again, we're in, there's a single the again. Right here is he's got to look to drive across like he did the first time. Two, and he he's got around, it. two. That's Knight leading by one. He has really established himself on the feet here. He just reaches in and takes the That's It's right. not a real shot. He just reaches down and gets it. And then he's driving Move across. Up, he's please. not trying to lift immediately. We'll see right it again here, here. you see, right off the shot, he snatches. That's a knee snatch right there. Okay, now he the keeps his hips in a good position, trips Tom that Andy back, on. and covers himself and covers Steve Martin's hips. All right, let's get back to action again here. Knight starting. Martin has been able to get out very quickly, and he did again. So now we're on the feet, even. Well, Steve six, Martin has six. to establish his offense right now. He's got to get back into this and go himself. He be, If he be, stays defensive, he's going to get beat. And Steve Martin has one takedown, four escapes. Iowa expects to win these first two matches. The crowd is up, and again, the cry for the single leg, the, the knee snatch that Tim called it, failed this time. We have a minute 15 to go in the first period, the last period of the first match. Still controls the arm. Use it. Is having trouble shaking that tie up. And a beautiful strike. That was a shock. Both up. A shock by Martin, and the, the escape is given tonight. That's a nice move by Martin on the takedown. He did a nice job of getting Watch right here. He hit. shucked him by, and then he spun around and covered that shoulder, covered the shoulder with his own shoulder. Dan Knight had a nice presence to catch that roll and get out. It was very close to two or four point move. Yes, and Martin takes him down. That's right. Like I said, Martin has an offense. He just needed to get it going. Looks like fatigue is beginning to make, be a factor here because Martin often likes to wear his man down. Yes. And Knight has run into a buzzsaw here in the last so, 30 set. seconds. He's now trailing by three. He has to get out. He gets out, he ties it. He has to get out before a minute arrives. Hey, said, to pile up that on. Could happen. This is important what Knight does. And he comes up to his feet. Trying to turn him. Well, he's really got to stand up. He's got to be able to get an escape and get a takedown. He's not going to be able to stay down on the mat because Martin's going to ride him down. There. Trying to keep Martin from putting the leg in. Now a roll again by Knight. Well, Dan's got the leg here. He's going to have to catch him on his back now. Martin knows where he's at. Tough position here with 10 Still seconds made. to go. Knight was unable to pull it. And Steve Martin, with a 10 to 7 lead, has nine seconds to go. Top man, you're on. Watch the clock. 
Martin's victory on a come from behind. He did have riding time in the last couple of seconds there, so it's Martin 11 and Knight 3, and the Hawkeyes lead 3 to nothing. Well, that turned out to be tougher, I think, than maybe the Hawks expected. It was a good match, Gus. Real good match. you got to give credit to both. Knight came out. Good job as a, as a freshman, but there's a young man that came from behind. He's got to feel real good about the job he just did in the last period. And he turned his offense on. And I'm sure Dan's going to say, look at those films again, Steve. Look what you can do when you turn the offense on. Let's do it the whole match. All right, now we go back to a, what I am expect was a good matchup in the Iowa wrestling room at one time. But Brad it was one-sided. It was right. one-sided enough that Penrith never relinquished the spot on the varsity. And so Steve Knight had to transfer. Steve Knight in the red on the right. Brad Penrith, who's finished first in the Nationals once and second another time, goes right in on a single. That's his specialty. That's Penrith's specialty. This is going to be a stalemate. Hold Penrith a is wonderful at that. Stay put. At those leg shots. It's put him at the top of the rankings in his way. Stay here. For two years in a row. We got one point. This man, illegal pen... It's one point, Iowa. Illegal scissors around the head and arm. One point, Iowa. Illegal scissors around the head and arm. That's considered an illegal hold. He had the legs tied around Penrith's neck, and that's illegal. Uh, probably saved him a point the way it was looking right there. Yeah. So it's Penrith one. Here's the same situation as the last. If Steve Knight's going to be in this match, he's got to establish his leg attack. He's got to establish his defense against Penrith's leg attack. But he does have a weapon, Doug. There it is. Nice move on the single leg, but Knight's out. Goes in with the uh, step in. Nothing. 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 Here's Penrith's counter. These are two fine wrestlers. Nothing. Nothing. Nice job on both parts. Steve Knight showed he, can, he established that low attack. Penrith came out of it with a real nice counter. He likes to go in on that, that trip, inside trip. And I was talking about Steve Knight's weapon. Everybody knows it, but you sometimes just can't stop it, and that's his headlock. It's tough. Penrith leads one to nothing with about a minute and 45 to go. Now, I'm sure that Steve Knight knows a lot of what's coming, like you said, from the practice room wrestling. But you know, not a lot. You know, you can know what's coming from Brad, Brad Penrith, and it's not going to do you any good yeah, because he comes say, out. A lot of pitchers knew so that guys, Babe Ruth might hit a home run if he threw the ball. Each other too, but Russell, stopping good point. It is another matter. Here is uh, Knight on the left against Penrith. The first match, if you just joined us, there is a shot of a double leg by Penrith. For the trip, did it for him. He's got it in his leg, and that makes it two to three to nothing. Nice job. Keep on the mat. Still down. That was a double leg by Penrith. And when he got the leg behind the trip, it was over. Yeah, bottom end is set. Right here, he drives in, he comes up, and he covers Tom that. Man, you're on. Covers those hips and trips the, takes the Steve Knight's support away by tripping his leg. Penrith starts on top. Me. He likes to put the legs in. Like that, and really pry. Penrith is awfully Escape, high, and he, right? he had to bail out there. He had the presence to know he was high, and he says, let me go back on my feet. I established myself. I'll get another takedown, he says. It's 3-1 to one now in favor of the man on the right, Penrith of Iowa. The Hawks won the first match three to, and have a three to nothing lead. I believe Steve Knight's going to have to work in a little closer. There's nothing. Knight from behind. A beautiful nothing, roll nothing, by nothing, Penrith nothing. and no score. Good quickness from Knight, but good reaction by Brad Penrith. Oh, he, he picked uh, Knight's pocket on that one. Because Knight was, he was behind two. Him. He was there. First period. Iowa State's choice. A top lot of bottom feet or defer? He defers. Your choice. Knight top defers. bottom of the feet. Iowa chooses down. And Penrith says, I'll go down. 
Start on the bottom. Bottom man is set. Top man, you're on. Steve Knight would like to establish himself here. Keep him down on the mat. Improve. Work for some points. He's pretty good on the mat. He's tough up here. It's his reputation. But there's the, the roll. Well, yeah, there's a Granby series type. And uh, they, you know, Penrith Granby rivals are is even better than Stevie Martin's. Four to one in favor of Penrith of Iowa in the second period. Oh, that long single. There again, you see uh, Penrith rolling with a man behind him. One. Well, both that was a little in yeah, they gave him two and one there, and it didn't look any different than, than uh, the last time. I think uh, it could be called either way, but I yeah. think it was called differently two times here. Well, that makes it five to three in favor of Penrith. And you heard Phil Henning's comment that he held him there, and he felt that, hey, he held him there for a second. He had two points. He had control. Well, Penrith rolls as soon as he hits his base. Right. And uh, he's been able to come out of that twice. Less than a minute to go in the second period here. It looks like Steve Knight's just waiting for Penrith to shoot and is saying, hey, the, the way I'm going to beat him right here is... Two and there's a takedown. Escape for, Iowa, both up. For Knight and a quick escape. It's See, six to five. This is really a strategy on Steve Knight's part. Well, he got Warren, too. So he's not going to be able to lay back too much. It's clear he's been counter-punching against uh, Penrith. I just don't think you can establish a match or establish yourself clearly on defensive measures. And that's what Steve Knight's doing here right now. He does have an offense, but it looks like he's kind of saying... It's not going to work against Brad Penrith. I've got to go counter. And I That's don't think you can consistently win that way. Well, now Penrith has one penalty point. The difference between them is that penalty. There's Dan Gable. Penrith has a Moving takedown in the first period, three escapes in the second. Knight got two takedowns in that period and an escape in the first period. So they're going to start on top. And it's going to start even. But you got to give credit to Steve Knight here for wrestling a smart match. I mean, he, you know, he's he's saying this is the way I believe that I can beat Brad Penrith. It's a little bit of a race, isn't it? To see if if Penrith will make a shot that Knight can counter before referee Phil Henning calls him for stalling. Well, yeah, but but Steve Knight has not made a shot. There's the single. Stalling is called. There it is. Injury time, Iowa. Over here. That makes it seven to five. The penalty was called. We have timeout while Penrith. Okay, right here again. He sprawls. Right here, that hip action. The hips in there. Now he's pushing out. And right there, he caught Brad Penrith in the eye on his defense. There, I don't know that there was anything intentional about it, but that was a correct call by Phil Henning. Yeah. Seven to five is the score. score. Two penalty points are the difference. That is interesting. It may be necessary now for Knight to change his tactics here. With a minute and 27 seconds to go. He's in a position where he can't do just everything he wants to do. And Penrith is tough in the third period. Penrith tried to snap. Well, now Knight's got to get back in on the leg attack. Penrith has made all the shots in the last two and a half minutes. There's a single leg by Penrith. That's where he wants to be. And he gets the takedown. Nine to five. One point, two point takedown. And he wants to ride for a while. He wants to do some damage here. He's looking for his... Bar Nelson's trying to turn him for some points. With a half a minute left. And what Steve Knight does not want to do is get turned for points and give Iowa an extra point for the team. Stalemate. Stalemate. Knight is quite strong, physically strong. And he's not easy to turn. But he, 
Penrith does have a four-point lead here with only uh, 23 points. seconds. They said. gave another oh, stalling. Right. Gave Ten to five, that's right. Top man, you're on. The next one's two points. Ten to five. Penrith blanketing his man on the top with that crossbody ride. Tough on the leg. Stalemate again. In the old days, somebody used to get Stalemate. into that crossbody ride with a single leg, and the, the, the legs in it just stay there. Next time, forever. I'm going to have to stalling if you can't improve. Top man on. Caution, this man, false start. His feet were on either side. Caution against feet Iowa. On, both feet on one side. Both feet on one side or the other. Top Ten to five, on. favor of Penrith, who's going to win because there is no time left. Does he have riding time? He does. It's 11 to five in favor of the Hawkeye. And so it's two in a row at the beginning for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Mark won against Knight, 11 to seven at 118. Penrith has defeated Steve Knight, 11 to five at 126. Now we're coming into part of the Iowa State strength with Jeff Gibbons at 34. You know, although Joe Gezzi's been out for a while at 42, you expect him to be strong. And then national champion Tim Krieger at 150. And this is going to be fun to watch because you're going to see three new faces in the Iowa lineup. Dean Happel first here at 134 against Gibbons. Happel is a transfer from Edinburgh State, but he wrestled with the Royce Algers team up at, at Lisbon. Right, I saw Dean a lot when I was at Mount Vernon, and Dean's a good wrestler. He's got good basic skills. He was coached well by Brad Smith up there, and he's just he's steady all the way through on his feet, top and bottom. But, you know, I like Jeff Gibbons. I think he's coming on. I think he continues to improve, and I think he has a much as, as much a variety of attack as anyone right now. Here we go back to the center. We're in the first period, which is three minutes long. Always when Iowa State wrestles Iowa, uh, Dan Gable has always been a, a fine coach for teaching his young man how to wrestle against an individual, a particular individual. So you can bet that Dean Happel has looked at a lot of film, a lot of tape. You know, that's that's where I think that, you know, I, I think Iowa State's really uh, come on to in the last few years because I think Jim Gibbons and his staff does a good job at just what you were talking about also. You could tell in the first two matches that they both had coached well against each other individually. No score here after the first minute. Iowa against Iowa State at Carver Hawkeye Arena. See Gibbons controlling the head at the top and uh, Happel just keeping the arm under there as long as he is in that position. Stalemate, center, both up. Back to the middle. And I think that Jeff Gibbons needs to shoot from out. Uh, Dean Happel's gonna tie him up close and Gibbons needs to establish attack, his attack from outside. A single, double situation, high crotch. There it comes There's in the first on the shot by Gibbons. He's got to he pull does, it in. He does have uh, just for a, a little bit. Right. Happel did a nice job of countering out, getting his hip pressure, staying in good position. Gibbons is able to block that uh, single leg attack with the underhook. And now we're back to the center again with a minute and 10 seconds to go at 134. I'm Doug Brown with Tim Johnson. Iowa Public Television at Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. The 43 match undefeated string at Carver is on the line here. There is Gibbons takedown. taking the advantage of a mistake. You know, and that's exactly what he did. He took advantage of getting Dean Happel out of position, and he got his two points and almost caught him on his back. So it is two to nothing now in favor of Gibbons. We use that two on one of Iowa State. We're very close to the edge, as you can see, and like a man in the desert, you know, so near but yet so far. Yeah. 
center. Let's go. You guys go back to the center. Down. Right here, that's where Dean Happel got in bad position. He got his, man, set. his hips failed Top to stay man, underneath on. him. Jeff Gibbons drove across him for two points. At the whistle, Gibbons maintains control. The tight waist, crunch the near arm. Improve, improve. Happel wrestled before he came back to Iowa for Mike Deanna at Edinburgh State, Pennsylvania. Iowa's choice, top, bottom, feet, or defer. That's the end of the period. Defer's choice, top, bottom, or feet. Happel defers. Iowa State chooses down. Gibbons takes down. A reminder that Second an intermission period. tonight after the 150-pound match will bring you Chuck Patton's new sports feature entitled The Seven Basic Skills of Wrestling. He'll analyze fundamentals developed by USA Wrestling. That'll be after 150 pounds. Now, Happel is on top to start the second period, trailing 2-0. So given comes Escape. to his feet, Both he's up. gone. Happel was willing to stay with him as long as they were on the mat, but then he gave it up when Gibbons came to his feet. So it's an escape making it 3-0 in favor of the man in red, Jeff Gibbons. Jeff Gibbons keeps such good position. Gives himself the opportunity, like I said, to take advantage when he gets the opponent out. Out of bounds. Keep your back off the edge, you can get one for stalling. That was spoken to Jeff Gibbons. Three nothing Gibbons. This period is two minutes long. Apple defending well, tried to throw a headlock and missed it, and two mistakes have cost him two takedowns. Right. It, it's, you know, it's not freestyle. You don't get rewarded for what you try. You better be sure of what you have in collegiate style wrestling before you throw something because they don't award you back to your feet on a slip throw. It's five to nothing now in favor of Gibbons. Riding with the near arm. Now gets the leg in, but Happel has good position here. He's trying to use a grand beat to come from behind. And Gibbons was just able to hold that position. It's still not resolved. Right, Jeff has a hold of the wrist there, so he's got pretty good position. A lot better than he might have come out with there. And it looks like it's gonna be close to either going out of bounds or called for a stalemate. And that's a good position right there to get a knee hurt also. And that's what he called. That's what Phil Henning called. He called it potentially dangerous because Jeff Gibbons' knee was in a situation there that it, it could have been bad. Saw Dan Gable shaking his head. He probably doesn't agree with me. I'm sure he doesn't. And neither does Dean. And Dean had almost, almost came out there. But This period is almost over. Second period. Gibbons leads 5-0. Iowa's choice third this period. Time it will be Happel's choice. Down. And he's Iowa tough choice because he wasn't able to get out well. Okay, bottom but he's going to take down. Well, he's still shown, except for a couple of mistakes, he's shown good basic uh, awareness of uh, uh, what to do in every position. And he's a fighter. He's tough. He's a competitor. And he says, I got to get out to win. Escape. Both and up. Gibbons. Just let it go. So it is five to one now in favor of Gibbons. The brother of the coach at Iowa State. Bill Henning starts him again. Gibbons hasn't been able to reach on his own moves. He has scored two takedowns as counters. Circle. When Happel's gotten out of position. Circle. Circle. That's the one that Gibbons has tried twice, three times. Oh. That was close. As far as whether Dean Happel had his knees in and had control, that was a close one. Close, but no cigar, as they say. So Happel has a minute and 15 to get something started. And come from four points down. Let's go in the middle, let's go. There's Tim Krieger, who will be up at 150 pounds. He's the first 
of the Iowa State National Champion. In the lineup, you saw Brad Pembrus, who walked away with an NCAA crown two years ago for Iowa at 126. Nobody has been warned. There's been no penalties. There's a single leg by Happel. Well, that's what he has to do. He has to, st he has to establish his offense. And, and he's here covering comes, this uh, leg well. He has a good well. opportunity here for two points. If he can stay with this ankle, oh, no now he's got to There's slip no out his shoulder. No points, he's got to nothing. pull up on that leg no and control, slip his shoulder. Nothing, this nothing, is uh, nothing, very much nothing. like the way they were a few minutes ago. That's a knee. All right. Knees okay. Well, at the edge I'll of the mat. Knees yeah, okay. I'll tell you what. Happel almost Stalemate. You guys came through on that. That was a nice shot Holds by him. Up. He just needs to finish it faster. So it's now five to one. With 20 seconds to go, there was a an offensive move by Gibbons. Made a shot at a high cross, but uh, Happel's been tying the head up well. It hasn't allowed him to score yet, but he's kept Gibbons at bay. Well, that's exactly right. And, uh, the coaches aren't uh, really too is. unhappy with that Center. performance, probably, except for the fact they would like to see more offense from Happel, but they aren't too upset because he didn't let Three Gibbons run away with the match. match. It is six to one because there was riding time. And the Cyclones get their first win. Six to one by Jeff Gibbons. He's a steady wrestler, Jeff Gibbons. He's coming on. Now we're going to 142, and this is one of the weights where people really don't know what to expect. On the basis of experience and record, you'd expect Joe Gezzi to be the favorite. He's the Iowa State man returning to the lineup, and because he has been out, and he's something of an unknown quantity just lately because of that, he had a bad shoulder. Well, and Eric Pearson, who's in there for, as a freshman from Oak Grove, Missouri for Iowa, hopes that he can pull an upset here. Well, Gezi's a real comeback story. He had a total restructuring of his knee last year, and he's really mentally, emotionally, physically, it's been a tough comeback. A little scrap you really on the want to come back when you have that bad an injury. Eric Pearson, Gable says he's a, just a good old boy from Missouri. He's tough, he hustles. And they expect big things from him in the future. He's a red shirt freshman. He won was a walk-on last year. He won two state championships in Missouri. Jesse yeah. and Pearson Both up. at each other on the edge of the mat. <laughs> Scrapping for position up at the top. They are very important in the sport of wrestling. That you can get the setup that you want. Pearson decided not to go under that time. Well, Gezi wouldn't mind getting into a scramble. He's shown in years past that he likes to scramble and he's good at it. He has over the years been better on the mat than on his feet. He's dangerous down there. Dangerous coming from under and a tough rider. This time, he's able to get his head out. Pearson had the control of the head. Six to three, Iowa, after three matches. Krieger against Mike Carpenter next. Center, guys. There's a whole lot of pushing and shoving. And Not a lot of attacks. Let's go. Open up. You're right, Phil. Here's Pearson trying to suck Gezi in there with that body lock. But Gezi is strong. Pearson did very well to come out of there. Well, I'll tell you what, that was Eric serious. Pearson just showed his coaches something. Here's thousands and thousands That's of right. Hawkeye fans. This is the first time that he's been in front on a varsity match in front of this kind of crowd. And they said, hey, he's getting in there and going, and that's what we want. Everything else will come, but some of the sometimes the hardest thing to get over, Doug, is that mental. Yeah. The fear that maybe you shouldn't throw it. <laughs> Just a fear of wrestling for the Iowa Hawkeyes in front of their fans and saying, well, well, will I do it? Can I do it? And he's saying, hey, I know I can do it. I got to just get out there and go. Moses Stalin. Both are Lauren. 
The attendance, by the way, today, we'll have in just a few minutes. Tell you about it. Good crowd. Great crowd today. 30 seconds to go, and in comes Pearson on the leg. There's Pearson. Now, he's got to cover and drive across. Gezzy wants to scramble with it, but Pearson's got to stay with good position. And Gezzy was fortunate that time. Tough move, and he got out of it. Pearson had to start. Well, I'll he tell just you. didn't get the finish. A veteran is Gezzy, but he's, he's given uh, Pearson maybe too many chances here. We're almost through the first period with no score. The attendance is 13,575. And that's a fine turnout here. Almost full house, but not quite. On a Saturday afternoon match. Iowa chooses neutral. So this time, Gezi deferred and Pearson decides to stay on the feet. Why not? Well, Pearson hustles, and his coach, Coach Gable, says he is a hustler. The only thing he's worried about, can he hustle all the way through the entire match? This time, a high crotch move by Gezi. Nothing. But Gezi nothing, isn't able to cut across, nothing, and that's what he needed to do. Now, Pearson likes where he's... Nothing. Oh, two, Gezi, two, he two, scrambles two. very well. Gezi yeah, is a does. fine scrambler, and he came out with the takedown. Two to nothing. Two takedown. No reversal there. He's one of these people who seems to roll around on the mat and know, you know, he has this built-in uh, balance fall. mechanism that tells him where he is. Right here, I think you're going to see him float around and just look what for what's going to come up. He, he likes to float. He likes to scramble. Pearson needs to come up and come out. Tom, man, you got to get out the side now. You got him broken down. You got to get out the side. So Gezi is not supposed to keep himself parallel to the other man's body. Now he's at the side. And also, Pearson's up in his base now for a change. Yes, he's putting a lot of drive against the shoulder and the, the back. Comes in with the leg. Now here comes the pride. Here is a possible... But he's move. too high. Yes, he was too high, and he was lucky to stay in That's control. Right. He's able to come back into control. Move off the ankle. We have 28 seconds to go second period. Gezi now has better than a minute of riding time. Center. We have 20 seconds to go in the second period. Iowa State and Iowa from Carver Hawkeye. Okay, bottom man set, top man, you're on. Right here, Gezi did not, was not able to cut across in the initial move, but he was able to scramble on a roll and come through for the two. Took it in the next Tom revolution. Man, That's right. There. <laughs> Didn't get it on the first one. Stayed with him. Ten Untied. seconds to go. Gezi putting pressure on on top. Bottom man, you're stalling. Bottom man, you're stalling. One point. That's a penalty. Bottom man, Pearson. you're stalling. One point. So Gezi gets a little uh, extra here. Iowa State's choice. Top, bottom, or feet. Iowa State chooses down. Gezi says down. And you know, it's not just to come out for one with Joe Gezi. Yeah. He likes to be down. He's dangerous. He can pin a man when he's in the down position. If he grabs your head, look out. I have no doubt that Pearson knows all about it. There's the there head. He goes for the head. Oh, Pearson. Was, was, I, was that an understatement when we talked about <laughs> scrambling? <laughs> <laughs> Still nothing. Guess he looks like he's just about to get the uh, reversal here. They got Two. it. Two. Reversal. Five nothing. <laughs> I'll tell you. You know, it's like Gezi says, I know where I am all the time, but I was impressed with Eric Pearson's uh, presence now. there wrestle. throughout that. He was able to uh, avoid the, uh, the head throw. He knew, uh, just like you said, I, I think he knew what was coming, but Gezi just keeps coming with it. Rarely gets ridden. 55 seconds to go here in this match. If Gezi were to win with the, what he has now, he would uh, tie the match. 5 nothing, nothing Gezi. 
with riding time. If he somehow were to get a near fall, that would make it a major decision. So it's uh, important for Gessie to keep the pressure on. Let's go top. It's a stall ride right there. Use it. Gessie riding with a tight waist and that high half. Pearson is One warned point. again. Is, is penalized One point. again. Iowa State. Phil Henning's feeling that when uh, yes, he changed his position, right Pearson right. moved. Pearson just hasn't been able to get back pressure into him. And there it is. That's the end. Riding time. It's seven to nothing in favor of Gessie. It'll come for, with experience for Eric Pearson. He's a tough kid. Joe Gessie did a nice job of coming back into the lineup. Scrambling his way to a victory. And he was very tough on top. He rode, well, the whole last period and part of the second. So it's even here now after four matches. We told you those uh, 34, 42, 50 are tough Iowa State weights. And maybe here is the toughest one of all. But you're looking right now at a young man that uh, Dan Gable thinks has a wonderful future. He's Mike Carpenter from Middleburg, Ohio. He went to St. Edward's School, where the Heffernans came from. And although he's only a freshman, he's 12 and 2. He's, well, he's a redshirt freshman. Yeah, he's a game wrestler. He's not going to be scared of Tim Krieger. He'll come after him. I don't know how much good it'll do, but we'll find out. Krieger is undefeated. He was the national champion last year. And he is, we said, uh, the Lehigh meet when we saw him earlier this year. He sometimes is a little scary. Scary in the means that he's that good. Yeah, he's very strong. Carpenter for Iowa. In the middle. Working the setup, trying to steal each other out here. Springer's keeping him away and taking long shots. Figures never lost to a St. Edward's kid, Doug. Is that right? Well, that's right. It's Heffernan. Jim Heffernan. Last year was the Hawkeye 150. Krieger's been in some tough matches this year. He won only by one point against, uh, for instance, Junior Taylor of Oklahoma State. Oklahoma? Of Oklahoma, yes. Yeah, pushing Oklahoma. and shoving. We've each got a half shot once. Two on one tie by Krieger now. Well, Mike Carpenter's a very pleasant surprise for his coaches this year, being able to step in the way. Now Krieger gets two. Just a single leg reach, and now he puts the leg in. He'd like to take some of the starch out of this freshman. This Krieger is, is tough. really tough on top. Boy, I'll tell you, he's tough. And there are near fall points being counted now. He just cranked on that. He had control of the legs in the back. Really put his hips into it, and even we even heard a little grunt there. He's going after it. It was a three-point near fall. That's one of the problems with wrestling Krieger. You can get way behind so fast. Yep. Oh, he's rolling it. Watch a choke. Watch a choke. Yeah, Turk in there again. Boy. Watch a choke. Watch a choke. He has the arm across the chin. That's what. He uh, just can't break. There he goes. He two, just broke the plane. Three, four, five. That makes it eight to three, nothing. Three, near fall. Improve. It's something, isn't it? You know, young Mr. Carpenter's wrestling a good match, and all of a sudden he's behind by eight points. Phil Henning has taken that one away from him. Well, Phil Four Henning's points. being consistent here. He's he's watching out for the safety of the wrestlers, and I give him credit there. And you know, the the coaches and the wrestlers that are on top at the time don't like to see it. But calls an illegal hold, it and it's hip. one point for right. Carpenter. Now it's eight to one. We top have five seconds. 
to go in the first period. And Krieger will end the position right here. The period eight to one. With Iowa's a minute and 27 seconds of riding time. Carpenter gets his Iowa chooses choice. Neutral. And he says, I'll stay up. He just says, I don't want to get on the mat here. There's Chuck Patton. We'll have his basic skills of wrestling part two coming up right after this match with our All-American presenters, Ricky Stewart and Lee Kemp. Well, Mike Carpenter, just like I was talking before about the, some of the other wrestlers, has to establish his offense right there. Just like Comes in a single leg. Across. He's got to say, I want this, I'm going to get it. And it's a takedown. So many nice times, play. so many times we're way too late. But you cannot win consistently without establishing your offense. And Carpenter gave Tim Krieger a little something to think about. Nine to three. He's a good, solid wrestler. Keeps good position, as you can see, too. But this time, again, Krieger comes around behind. Nice leverage on the leg. He had a nice grip there. He was able to leverage himself around. 11-3. to three. And this is down on the feet again. Apparently, Carpenter's pretty tough to load up with that tilt. I think he's just playing pretty tough. So Krieger now goes back to the moves that he scored with the last time. Yeah, that's, that takes a lot of attention when you're on the bottom. Krieger again puts the leg in. Stalemate on the leg. See, the reason they called it a stalemate also, Krieger wasn't getting his pin move. He wasn't getting the back to the mat. So Carpenter was unable to come up because he had one of his total braces. One of his legs were off the mat, so he had no opportunity to come up. So Krieger either had to turn him or they had to come up. Time out for a shoe tie here. Mike Carpenter. He was a, a one-year high school champion. The bottom end set. At St. Edward. And, and he was a runner-up in the U.S. Esquire last summer. No, not yet. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Nothing. nothing. Good scramble by Mike Carpenter. Nice. He got an escape very quickly. Both it's 11 to 4 now in favor of Krieger. I think, Watch it talk, personally, I think Carpenter's establishing himself as somebody tough. You know, he's not yep. going to go in and lay down. Krieger, he's, he's, a, he's a tough individual, and he'll come after you. And Carpenter's saying, watch out. Nothing. Yeah, he came in with a double leg that time, and Krieger had to work everything he knew to keep from getting uh, taken down. choice. Top by the feet. End of the period. Now you, you can see Carpenter's firing up this Iowa crowd with those shots at uh, Krieger. Yeah, he's not scared to look at, look him in the eye, is he, Doug? Krieger's going to start on the bottom. It's his choice. He decided man, you're on. See if he can get out. Mike Carpenter sets up. Escape. They're out. Okay, it's a four-point team win here, as it is, right? Right, 12 to four, and actually he has riding time too, so it's important for Carpenter to get the takedowns. To get back in this match, get it back down into less than major decisions. There's a double leg, he's been able to hit it three times. Yes, he clears it well, now he's covering it well. He's been able to reach Krieger with that he double leg right. beautifully. Well, Krieger's got to come right up. And Carpenter out. says he's going to let him up because he knows he can. Well, it's, it's the only way he can is on his feet. But the next takedown is going to decide whether this is a major decision or not. And uh, Carpenter has looked very good on his feet against this national champion from Iowa State. There's a heel pick, Two a beautiful move down. by... Krieger, that's one of his specialties that he had not shown so far. Yeah, that's experience. He, he had all these different moves in his head. He set himself up. He said, there's the ankle. I'm going to pick it. He's got the chin. He's all right. And he's driving with a nine-point lead. You know, I think the difference, Center still down. Doug, and experience sometimes is the number. Right here, 
Is the re okay, he just looked for that ankle and he picked it. He has so many things going on in his mind, he can he can keep them up there and he, it's, it's a repertoire of moves. And when you're young, you don't seem to have that many things going on at the same time. It'll come for yeah. Mike Carpenter. Well, he's only a freshman. If Krieger has another year after this, and I suppose somewhere along the line, they're gonna think, boy, oh boy, I've gotta wrestle this guy again. 15 to seven. It's important now for Carpenter to get a takedown to break up the major decision that Krieger now has. He leads by eight. We have only 18 seconds to go. Single leg, couldn't finish it. Krieger could not get in. This time he takes the leg waist. He's very strong with those arms. And now he does have the major decision. 17 to seven. Wasn't able to turn. That's it, guys. Riding time makes it 18 to seven. It's a major decision for Krieger. You know, it's a good match for both wrestlers. Yes, it was. It's good experience for both wrestlers. Carpenter knows he can go. Krieger knows, hey, there's never a time you can't improve. He knows it. He's that kind of wrestler. He'll be back in the room just working that much harder. The Cyclones now take a lead, 10 to 6 here, as we come up to intermission. They won the three matches they figured to win. Iowa won two that they figured to win, and we haven't really had any upsets so far. And we're only halfway done. It's Iowa against Iowa State at Carver Hawkeye Arena. That is the end of the 150-pound bag. And right now, Iowa Public Television would like to present a new feature entitled The Seven Basic Skills of Wrestling with Chuck Patton. Tonight, Chuck will analyze the second in a series of wrestling fundamentals.